Hello, my name is Ed Boyle, a cardiothoracic surgeon and co-inventor of the Pluriflow Active Clearance Technology System to prevent chest tube clogging and retain blood for patients recovering after heart and lung surgery. In this segment of our technical tip series, we will discuss some of the considerations for proper insertion and securement of the Pluriflow Active Clearance Technology System in the operating room. Avoiding some simple technical issues upon insertion can optimize product performance and maximize the potential to obtain the best surgical drainage possible in the ICU while the patient is recovering. Placement of the Pluriflow system is easy. The surgeon simply inserts the silicone chest tube in the usual fashion. Once inserted, the chest tube needs to be cut at the designated cut length. This will ensure that the clearance wire and loop is the correct length for the chest tube. The Pluriflow system can be used in all standard drainage positions. However, when placing the chest tube, the most important point is that the chest tube is not kinked or does not have a high degree of curves so that the clearance wire and loop can easily enter and exit the chest tube. To achieve this goal, there are three technical considerations. When you create the skin incision and tunnel the chest tube, make sure the chest tube tunnel is of adequate size so it does not kink or dimple the silicone tube. If the incision tunnel is smaller than the French diameter size of the tube, it can cause a dimple of the lumen that can prevent the clearance wire and loop from advancing or retracting. This will result in magnetic safety release at the skin level. The path of the chest tube inside the chest is also important for the pluriflow system. The surgeon places the chest tube in the usual fashion. However, it is imperative to avoid any kinks or sharp bends that will impair the travel of the clearance loop in and out. We recommend in the initial phases of implementation only one pluriflow system in the anterior mediastinum until the team is comfortable with the routine of this new device in their practice. The surgeon should place additional conventional chest tubes as required. Securing the chest tube too tightly to the skin can also dimple the silicone chest tube. Take care not to tie the suture so tight it creates an hourglass type obstruction in the lumen of the tube at the tie down site. Once the tube is secured, test it once in the operating room to make sure the clearance loop glides past the suture line while the patient is still on the operating table. If this is preventing the clearance loop from advancing, it will have to be retied to allow the clearance loop to freely pass as intended. As a final test, before the patient leaves the operating room, simply actuate the clearance wire and loop to make sure it can travel smoothly through the chest tube. This will ensure that the pluriflow system is functioning as intended before the patient is transferred to the ICU. If any obstruction is noted, it can quickly be addressed before the patient leaves the operating room. All of these technical considerations have a similar theme. Take care to avoid any kinks, bends, or tube dimples that can obstruct the travel of the clearance loop in and out of the chest tube. If you have questions, please consult the Pluriflow Active Clearance Technology Instructions for Use Contact your local sales representative or visit clearflow.com.